All right, hello there and welcome. In this video, we are going to talk about enqueuing JavaScript in WordPress. Now, enqueuing JavaScript is the process of loading JavaScript in a theme or the admin area via PHP functions. And this is where in our work with JavaScript, we have to turn to PHP a little bit and some of the underlying mechanisms in WordPress, like hooks and different functions and how they work in order to make our JavaScript work. So it's a little bit different there. The two functions in specific we're looking at are WP and QScript and WP localized script. Now WP and QScript is what we use to actually load our JavaScript files in. So we're not going to be hard coding script tags with links to our JavaScript. And WP localized is a bit of a hack that allows us to take data from WordPress, whether in the database or PHP functions, and dump them onto the page so that we could use them in JavaScript. So we'll be looking at both of these real quick. Now here's what WP and QScript looks like. It takes five different parameters and we're going to talk about them each one by one. So the first parameter we have here is a unique handle name. And this would sometimes be something like uh, a theme handle or something like that. Um, and we need to ha make sure that it is unique. So you want to give it a name that sort of would be unique for your theme or your plugin that won't be written, overridden by something else. Uh, WordPress is automatically going to attach dash js to the end of it to identify it as a JavaScript file. Um, and the nice thing about this is then we could refer to this file in other places, which we'll learn how to do. So unique handle name, um, something that won't be overridden by another theme or plugin. Then we need to get, in this case, we're looking at themes here. We'll look at plugins a little bit later separately. But get style sheet directory is going to get us the URL to our site. So HTTP, whatever, um, HTTPS, the name of our site.com slash WP dash content slash themes slash uh, the name of our theme. And then we're into our theme itself. Now there, and so we could see, then we'd put a path to our JS file. Maybe it's inside of assets, JS, something like that. So this is one approach you'll see. This is if you're working with a child theme, but if you have a parent theme, then you want to use get template directory URI, and that will give you um, the parent theme directory. So depending on which instance you're in, you could use either one. Um, however, we do need to link up to our file, and you definitely don't want to hard code the URL because that might change depending on if your theme or plugin is used somewhere else, etc. So next up we have dependency handles. One of the great things about WordPress is that if you list another file or unique name, remember unique handle was the first parameter we set. If WordPress has set up unique handles of its own for things that it loads for you, as well as if you wanted the order of your files to uh, be enqueued in a certain order, you could say, hey, load this one file and make sure that it's dependent on these three other ones. Then when WordPress enqueues things, it will make sure that it puts it down lower. The great thing about dependency handlers is they also as I kind of alluded to, work for internal WordPress. So WordPress has some of its own JavaScript libraries that it makes available, and we could reference them um, using the shorthand here. So we'll look at a bunch of that um, throughout working with JavaScript and WordPress, but it's important to know those dependencies exist. The next one is the version. So WordPress is automatically going to cache your JavaScript files, which can be frustrating during development, but it's really helpful during production. And by default, if you leave version blank, it will um, put it to whatever the version of either WordPress or your theme is, I believe. And then if you want to override it to a specific version um, yourself, you could do that. You'll also see in development, <clears throat> a lot of times folks will do some sort of shorthand like this and put a timestamp in on the file so that WordPress won't cache it. So this will be helpful during development, but you definitely want to have a hard-coded version once you launch for production. And then finally, the last parameter is a true-false parameter. Usually we leave this off, and this tells WordPress whether to load in the footer or not. So by default, it's set to true, so you don't actually have to put in true here, and it will automatically put your JS in the footer. If for some reason you need it to be in the header, you could put false in where you see load in footer here, and then that will make sure it's loaded in the top. But uh, like I said, this is usually optional, and we could leave it off because it's going to default to putting our stuff in the footer. So that is WP and QScript. This is how we're going to load all of our JavaScript. If you haven't used this before, it'll either become second nature or you'll get so used to copying and pasting it around that it should be pretty comfortable uh, for you to use. Now let's look at WP Localized Script. Now WP Localized Script doesn't load JavaScript files. It loads values into a global window object. So we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. Let's just break this down and look at what it's doing here. So first off, we need a JS handle. This refers to the unique handle that we set up for our other files. So what it's going to do 
is make sure that we connect this with um, some other JavaScript going out on the page. Um, the next one up is going to be the name of our object itself. So uh, if you know in JavaScript the global scoping, if you have something defined as var, it'll automatically get put up as window, then whatever the name of the variable is because of how scoping works. So what this is going to do is attach a variable onto the window object. So we're going to have a variable available called name for JS object. And this is going to be an object. And inside of it, we could define a bunch of different things that we could look up with PHP and WordPress and dump onto the page with JavaScript. So for example, in this one, I'm getting the URL of our site that might be helpful for some API requests. Um, and we're also getting the name of our site, which is something dynamic. People could change it. So on each page load, it will get that information from WordPress and then load it. So you could see how we have window.name for JS object. Obviously, we'd shorten that dot site URL, that's going to give us the name of the site. So if you've ever wondered about how do I get information from PHP and WordPress onto the front end, this is one way to do it. However, this is a bit of a hack. WP localized script, as the name suggests, was originally set up to pass in different text versions of translations of strings. So we're kind of hijacking it a little bit. And really, we want to get into using REST API endpoints. But sometimes, if you need a quick hack, um, this is available currently in WordPress to do this. We could also shorten it down. We don't need to type window. We could just do name of the object and then dot site URL. OK, so that's WP localized script, a bit of a hack, but a way for getting PHP data onto the page that we could use with our JavaScript. Now, this is something that you do at a high level, so it would probably be going on to most pages, although we could write some conditional logic that would let us get really specific about doing certain things on certain pages specifically. All right, so the thing about these functions is that we're always going to wrap them in another function and hook them into WordPress. There are some hooks inside of WordPress when you're building a theme or plugin or WordPress has itself that allows you to that allows it to load our JavaScript at a certain point um, based on other conditions met and you know make sure that it puts it at the right place at the right time. So this is the hook for it, WP and Q scripts, and we'll hook in our own function, which will in turn call these other two functions. And this is just the pattern. Um, hopefully you've worked with WordPress a little bit that you've seen this. If not, um, you should get comfortable over the next couple exercises playing around with it. So when it comes to enqueuing JavaScript in a theme, we're going to look at a few practice examples here. We'll look at just how to enqueue JavaScript. We'll look at how to enqueue multiple files and use that dependency setup, one of those parameters. We'll look at making jQuery a dependency uh, because it is commonly used in themes, although we now have React in WordPress, so we could also enqueue React if we wanted. And the other thing about jQuery is there's that no conflict wrapper we have to mention, so we'll do some work with that. Then we'll look at enqueuing external JavaScript libraries. Sometimes we want to load JavaScript from a CDN, and there are some things we might want to do to that uh, to make sure that URL doesn't break. And we'll look at conditionally enqueuing JavaScript. So we could load our JavaScript just on a certain page or at certain times, which is something really helpful to do. And finally, we'll practice with the localizing scripts and adding some of our own hack PHP or stuff from WordPress onto the page for us to be able to do. So let's go ahead uh, and shift gears a little bit from this high-level introduction to enqueuing JavaScript and walk through some practice exercises on um, how to do this stuff a little bit more specifically.